Greetings, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St. Luke's Uniting Church in Heighton. Jesus often taught using parables, short stories containing a message, a message that often uh, confronts us and actually, if we take seriously, can change us. Sometimes the meaning of a parable taught by Jesus while confronting is pretty straightforward. Think, for example, of the parable of the Good Samaritan. But there are other parables, like the parable we're going to look at today, that, uh, while confronting, are also hard to interpret. And the parable we're looking today at is the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids. I'm going to argue that at its heart, this parable contains a counter-cultural message. That in God's kingdom, there is a place for waiting, faithful waiting. The one true God, the God of love, who we know as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, is closer to us than we can ever imagine in all of our living. So let's now intentionally spend some time in prayer with God. The prayer I'm about to use is, has been written by uh, Nancy C. Townley from the United Methodist Church. I should say some of the words of this prayer come from her. Let's spend some time now in prayer. Let's pray. Holy God, help us to focus on you. We are pulled in many directions Many duties and tasks seek to lay claim on our lives. By your Spirit, enable us at this time and in this place to open our hearts and spirits to you. Blessed are you, God of creation, who calls us to follow in the way of the one who offers us life in all its fullness, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Praise be to you, living God, for you sustain and nurture us. Forgive us, Lord, if too often we have made you a scheduled event on our weekly calendars. Help us to face up to the reality of our lives. Where needed, bring into our lives your encouragement, your blessing, your mercy and your transformation. Let us never forget that you are the eternal God who has always loved us and been ready to receive us. Help us to learn that with you as our foundation, we can handle anything that comes our way. That with you as our focus, all things pale in comparison. May we offer you praise now and in all the events of each day. May we be ready to receive you in all our living. And we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Towards the end of Matthew's Gospel, there is a collection of three parables, parables of Jesus, that are directed to his disciples and therefore directed to any who seek to follow in the way of Christ. The parables are the parable of the slave left in charge, the parable that we're looking at today, the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids, and the parable of the talents. One commentator has described these three parables as all about faithful waiting. Today's reading comes from Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. I'm reading from the New Revised Version. The following is one of the series of parables that Matthew tells us that Jesus told to his disciples a few days before his arrest and crucifixion. Then the kingdoms of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. 
But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, there is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourself. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later on, the other bridesmaids also come, came, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is not an easy passage to interpret. I've read quite a number of commentaries on this particular parable, and the scholars struggle over quite a number of the details. For example, the fact that all of the bridesmaids fall asleep, not just the foolish ones, but the wise ones as well. And then you've got the fact that the foolish bridesmaids are treated so badly by the wise ones. They, they, the wise ones refuse to share their oil. And then the way in which the foolish bridesmaids are not treated with any sense of grace toward the end of the, the, the parable. I think one of the things that probably troubles most of us and we struggle with a bit as we read this parable is the fact that we know that we all fail to make the great. That um, we so easily could be judged amongst those who are considered to be foolish rather than those considered to be wise. But as I've already suggested, judgment isn't all there is to this parable. At its heart, this parable is about the nature of waiting. Now in the parable, the bridesmaids are obviously waiting for the bridegroom to come. Yes, the bridegroom. Not like in our time when we're often waiting for the bride. But um, if you read articles from, uh, say, the Wik Wikipedia online, you'll see that customs around marriage in those days, in Jesus' days in, in Palestine, were completely different from the customs that we're used to here in Australia in 2020. Waiting is so much a part of living. We uh, wait for a birth, we wait at the doctors, we wait to hear how we went in an interview or an exam. In these days of COVID-19, we wait for things to be better. We wait for restrictions to be lifted. We are waiting for a vaccine that's safe to be available to all people. And yet waiting is not something many of us find very easy. In fact, some people find waiting very difficult. Who hasn't been frustrated to have found themselves in a queue at the supermarket, which for some reason or other proves to be the slowest? Or what about waiting for a bus or a train, which turns out to be late? I don't know about you, but I found myself standing in the road looking up the road, hoping somehow or other that the bus would come because I'm looking way down the road. Or what about waiting in a traffic jam, perhaps on the Monash freeway, and wondering whether you're ever going to get out? And have you noticed how advertisers, promoters, recognise the fact that we don't like to wait? So their advertising is all about getting it right now. Don't wait, order now. Get it now and pay later. Don't be disappointed, buy now. You don't have to wait. The early Christians, following the ascension of Jesus, were waiting, as we are waiting. Waiting for the day of the Lord waiting through strife and turmoil, waiting for when the words of Revelation chapter 21 will be clear to all. Death will be no more, mourning and crying and pain will be no more, and the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne says, See, I am making all things new. They were waiting, we are waiting, waiting for the day the prophet Amos described in these terms, and you can look this up in chapter 5, when justice rolls down like waters 
and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. To use the words from the first chapter of the basis of union of the Dining Church, the Church, we are waiting, waiting with hope at the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, on which it will be clear that the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of the Christ who shall reign forever and ever. Now the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids challenges us to wait like the wise bridesmaids with a good supply of oil. By the way, many have speculated on what that oil might symbolise. Luther argued that the oil should be understood as faith, as you could imagine. Others have suggested it is, a, it is to quote Paul, this oil, the most excellent way. In other words, love. What do you think? One commentator suggests surely the clue to how the church, how we should wait, is found in some neighbouring passages in the Gospel of Matthew. And by the way, this isn't rocket science, folks. You'll know the passages that I'm about to point to. While the church waits, while we wait, we are to bear witness to God's kingdom, according to Matthew 25, by clothing the naked, welcoming the stranger, feeding the hungry, visiting the sick. And also, we, the church, are, according to Matthew 28, to be about making disciples in all the world. In other words, the church is called to share the good news in word and deed. That is what faithful waiting looks like. The parable, in other words, reminds us, no, that's too gentle, it doesn't remind us, it bluntly challenges us to be clear about what waiting is all about. That those who profess to follow in the way of Christ are to live the gospel today. To live, though, in hope, knowing that one day, the day of the Lord will come. Our prayer of intercession in this video is based on a prayer by the Reverend Richard Fairchild. Let's pray. We are glad and rejoice forever in you, O God. With joy we draw deeply from your well of life and healing. Though the world has been gripped by trouble since early days, and life has often been short and difficult, you have given us a vision of a day beyond the woes, a day when the heavens and the earth will be new again, a day when the sound of weeping will give way to delight, a time when all creation will live in peace, the Lord's day. Help us to hold on to that vision when things about us are falling and our world is shaken. Strengthen us for the telling of your truth and living wisely and for keeping to your path that we might not weary in doing what is right. As we pray for a new heaven and a new earth this day, we are especially aware of those among us and those beyond our community who are in deep need of your peace, of your healing touch, of your just and bounteous kingdom. We pray for those who dwell in places of strife, need and want. We pray for those who have been bereaved in this past week. We recall that next Thursday is Remembrance Day. We remember those impacted by war in our day and in days past. And in remembering also that this is NADOC week, we pray for the relationship between first and second peoples in this land. Gracious God, we pray to you in the name of the one who came to show us the way. He who is our Lord and our Redeemer, our brother and our friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we go into another week, hear the hope-filled words of Archbishop Desmond Tutu as words for you. Go in peace and remember goodness is stronger than evil. 
love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen.